Today we have a really fun attacking game by Richard Report against Nils Grandilius. Welcome to Chess Dog. My name is John Montgomery. Uh, Richard Report is currently seventh in the world. He's a Hungarian. He's 26 years old. His opponent, Nils Grandelius, is uh, 28 from Sweden with a peak rating of 2694. This game was played in January of this year at the 84th Tata Steel Masters at Wyk and Zay. Let's get right into it. Grandelius has the white pieces. Richard Report has black. Grandelius begins by playing e4. Report responds with c5. Now, Grandmaster Report is known for having a very unorthodox approach to chess, and particularly the openings, but in this game he keeps it in more standard lines. He plays a Sicilian, knight f3, e6, d4, c, d4, knight d4, knight c6, knight c3, and queen to c7, the Taimanov variation of the Sicilian. Uh, and it is Grandelius that plays the more unorthodox move here. He plays g4, and there is no knight to hit on f6 yet. Uh, the standard sort of English attack approach to the Taimanov is bishop e3, then a6, queen to d2, knight f6, long castles, then after bishop b4, or bishop e7, f3. And this is how you normally would get into an English attack. This game gets into it a little bit differently after g4. Grandmaster Report plays h6, bishop e3, knight f6, and f3. And you see white has that e4, f3, g4 structure that's so common in the English attack already. a6, queen to d2. And basically this is the same as the English attack line, except that black has played h6, and the development of the bishop at f8 hasn't happened yet. You'd think this would favor white, uh, but actually black scores a little bit better in this position than they do with the bishop developed and the h-pawn still on h7. So go figure. It's apparently black uh, can do okay in this position. Richard Report plays knight to e5, threatening knight to c4, which would grab the two bishops, also putting some pressure on f3 that's only defended by the knight at d4 for the moment. And Nils Grandelius plays f4. Again, he's the one that's pressing. He gives up his g-pawn uh, to open up the g-file for his heavy pieces. The knight jumps into c4, bishop takes, queen takes bishop, excuse me, yeah, queen takes bishop, and now black has the two-bishop advantage. e5, knight takes g4, knight d5 is also another reasonable option for Richard Report. Knight to g4, never one to back down from a challenge, he takes the pawn that is offered. Rook to g1 to grab the half-open file, knight takes bishop, Queen takes e3. So we can assess this position. White has a space advantage, a huge lead in development, and the half-open g-file. Well, what does black have in exchange? Well, black has the two bishops and has a pawn. Um, and one thing about black's position, it is, and anyone who's played against the Taimanov knows this, it is annoyingly hard to attack. So even though white has a huge lead in development, where are the targets in the position? Perhaps he can find a way to exploit these weaker dark squares, maybe play f5 to open up some lines, but it's hard to find activity, even though you have a huge lead in development. Report responds with b5, long castle, bishop to b7, king to b1, a standard move when you castle long, and now report castles long. He doesn't want to castle into this open g file that we've already mentioned. Now knight to e4. Um, Computers like this move knight to b3 with the idea of playing rook to d4, hitting the queen, and then doubling up on the d-file. Also, the a5 square is sensitive, and if black plays d5 here, which creates a French structure, instead of taking off a saunt and opening for the bishops, white can play knight e2 and plant a knight on the d4 square. Uh, but knight e4 was played in this game, obviously, trying to put some pressure on these weak, darker squares. The king moves to b8, so now the rook can come to c8 and put some pressure on the half-open c-file. Rook to d3, rook to c8, now rook g to d1, centralizing the rook, but also giving up control of that g-file that he sacrificed a pawn to obtain. So you have to wonder if it was worth giving up that g-pawn. The bishop goes to e7. Richard Report slowly begins to catch up in development here. Rook to c3. Queen to a4, keeping the king of uh, the queen close to Nils Grandelius's king, continuing to hover around there. 
Rook C to D3. And uh, White's Knight on E4 can definitely cause a lot of trouble. So a uh, Richard Report decides to take it off of the board. Now, B3 is the response. To just take the bishop directly, Richard Report could play this move. Boom. Rook takes C2. And the knight on D4 is pinned. He cannot take the rook, and of course B3 would just lose to queen to A2 mate. So white first plays B3, this intermediate move, to kick the queen away, and only then takes the, take the bishop. The problem is he does weaken these dark squares around his king, and that is going to become an issue. The queen moves back to A5. Queen takes E4. Now rook to C7, preparing to double rooks on the C file. F5 is played, and the computer in it... In, recommends a very bizarre, something that a human would never see, but it is quite brilliant. The computer recommends that white plays c3, and here's the line. Rook takes c3, and then knight to e6. <laughs> it makes no sense at first, but watch. Rook takes, rook takes, and then when the pawn takes, rook to d7. Threatens the bishop at e7 and mate on b7, and after queen b6, rook e7, the position is basically equal. Uh, black is up a pawn, but white's active rook compensates for that. But Niels Gandelius plays f5, rook h to c8, doubling on the c file, and now rook to g3. The rook moves back to the g file to try to put pressure on the g7 pawn that is now not defended by the bishop. The bishop moves into a3. So Richard Report is getting much closer to getting into these squares. He would love to just put his queen on c3 and deliver mate on b2, but how to do it? At the moment, the rook at g3 defends the c3 square. So how does he arrange to push the g3 rook away to allow his queen to get in? Well, let's watch how he does it. h4, queen to b4. h5, now rook to c3. The idea is to get rid of this rook. And it, the only way for white to survive is, again, a computer brilliancy at this point. Um, he takes the pawn at g7. The way to survive is to take on e6, and then after rook takes g3, let's say first if he takes here, then rook takes g7, then if rook h3 to clear the square for the queen to get in, rook takes d7, and the threat of mate on b7 is just too fast for black to generate any threats. But let's say rook takes g3, pawn takes, and if rook to d8, knight to c6 would fork the king, and the queen, and also put some pressure here, king c7, knight b4, obviously, white would win. So the saving idea here is pawn takes pawn. He plays rook, takes g7, rook to h3 to clear the way for the queen to get to c3. So the queen goes to e1. So the queen is defending c3 and also offering an exchange of the queens. So my question to you is, how does black win this position? You can pause the video if you'd like. That's right. Black plays this powerful move, rook to h1. And Nils Grandilius has no good choice. If he takes the rook, then just queen to c3. And nothing can be done to stop mate on b2. If he takes the queen, rook takes d1. Check mate. The king has nowhere to go. Now, the only long shot attempt to survive is this computer line. Knight to c6 check. <laughs> Indulge me here. <laughs> Dc6, then rook to g1, rook g1, queen g1, and only now, if black were to jump into c3, he would actually lose because of this move. Queen to b6 check, king a8, queen a6, king b8, then queen takes bishop, and uh, white would be in very good shape in that position. However, instead of playing queen to c3, he could just play queen to c5, and then he would be winning with his extra bishop, which is, of course, what would happen. But after what Niels Grandilius plays in the game, it's over quickly. Rook to g1, rook takes g1, queen g1, and queen to c3. And mate on b2 is unstoppable. So a very nice attacking game from Richard Report over Niels Grandilius. I hope you've enjoyed this game, and uh, see you again soon at Chess Talk. Goodbye.